Hardly anyone in Novier Uglas imagined that a resident of the village, in the past an assistant nurse of the neurosurgical department at the Second City Hospital, a CISO worker, Natalia Veranina, would marry a foreigner. And her husband, a native of Nigeria, will decide to change the hot African climate, jungle, and savanna for the Russian winter and industrial sheavprats. But love is an incomprehensible feeling, pushing for the most incredible actions. Their communication began six years ago on a dating site where Natalia sent her photo. Within five minutes, I received an offer to meet a black guy. She became interested and she answered. This is how A.J. Gabrielle Shogun entered Natalia's life. For loved ones, it's just Paul. At first, we communicated with the help of an electronic translator, talked about ourselves, about our relatives. After four years, they realized that they were irresistibly attracted to one another. I sat on the Internet for days, and I was not embarrassed by the color of his skin, his age, or the fact that he has a completely different culture, Natalia recalls. The more I got to know him, the more I realized that this is my person who can feel and understand me, my mood, even without words. I saw a Russian woman on the site and wanted to add her as a friend. And then there were feelings, Paul echoes of his wife. I wanted to come to Russia to see her, but I didn't know how black foreigners were treated here. Natalie assured me that there was no problem with that. I went to the consulate many times, but I couldn't get a visa. Then I suggested that Natalie come to Nigeria, get to know my family, and she agreed. The trip to Nigeria was Natalia's first trip abroad. She didn't know English, let alone the local language, and customs. Moreover, because of hypertension, and it's very difficult to tolerate the heat, I was worried about food and water because of a meeting with Paul's relatives, but they treated the guests as if they were their own. Natalia was also accustomed to the national dish pepper soup, each spoonful of which, because of its sharpness, was initially washed down with two glasses of water. As expected, I was the only white woman in the area. The house was not empty for a single day. There were a lot of people all the time, because a white man, especially a woman, is wonderful for them. As, however, for us, there's a black person, says Natalia. Everyone tried to touch me, even with bills, because they considered it a great success, a blessing. I never walked alone in the street, only with Paul or his relatives. It was difficult to communicate, but a tablet, a phone, and Google Translator helped. A week later, without any prefaces, Paul proposed to her. It gave me only half a day to think. The next day, March 28, 2013, their marriage was registered in Lagos. Then, as local customs dictate, the wedding celebration lasted six days. Then they got married in Russia, according to Russian customs. Relatives asked me how serious my feelings were and if Natalie would want to stay in our country. I replied that I loved her very much, but I did not think that she would agree to live in Africa and I would go with her, Paul recalls. My father said that it's very cold in Russia. We saw it on TV, but if I agree to tolerate it, then he respects my feelings and my choice. My family knew I was surfing the Internet day and night, but no one believed that we had real feelings. Neither my older sister, nor my son, nor the neighbors believed in our feelings. Everyone thought it was just a game and a hobby until I showed them a plane ticket. But even I did not expect that I would marry him, shares Natalia. One day he just came into my room and proposed. The next morning they brought me a white dress, friends and guests came, and we went to the registry office there. Relatives and neighbors were, of course, shocked because I came as a married woman. The only one I asked for advice was my son. Anatoly, Natalia's 22-year-old son, was initially suspicious of her mother's friendship with a foreigner, afraid that it was a fraud, but now he and Paul are friends. When my mother said that she was getting married, we talked with her on Skype, I was confused. But after thinking about it, I told her that she raised me, fed me, and I already have my own family, a child, and now my mother must live for herself. And now I notice cardinal changes in my mother. She's very young, has become cheerful, blooming, says Anatoly. For the first time from Africa, Natalia returned alone and immediately began to issue an invitation to her husband. Paul arrived in Russia in July 2013 on a visitor visa and was forced to leave the country again after three months. Natalia flew to Nigeria once again to convince the Russian embassy to issue her husband a visa. Now, with the assistance of the local migration service, Paul's been issued documents for temporary residence. I like Russia. I like Russian holidays, traditions. I like borscht, potatoes, spaghetti, pie with apples, which Natalie cooks. Sher Pavets is a beautiful city. Paul shares his impressions. 
I went to the service in your church when I first went out into town. People were very surprised. They wanted to take a picture with me. I willingly agreed. The biggest problem I faced at the beginning was the cold. I thought that in such frosts you can't go outside. Natalie poured cold water on me in the country when I was adapting to the climate. Now I'm not afraid of the cold. On Epiphany, he even poured water. Although we're still arguing with Natalie about open windows and closed batteries. And the spouses sometimes argue because of the fact that Natalia works a lot around the house, cooks, does laundry, cleans. According to Nigerian traditions, a woman should give birth to children and cook food. The rest of the household duties are assumed by men. Russian women work very hard. Work, kitchen, dacha, home, children, Paul said. Natalie works in the morning and in the evening. One day I told her, my love, calm down, stop working, leave business. She didn't listen, so I had to put her on the couch, give her the TV remote in her hands and make her rest. I can do all the housework myself. In New Corners, everyone is already used to the good-natured black guy. Some turn to him for help in matters related to computers. Paul is very popular with local children, with whom he's ready to ride down the slide and even on skates, sculpt snow figures. However, the African does not yet risk getting out to the city in the evenings. He fears that due to the language barrier, it will be difficult to communicate with the police. I studied at CHSU for two months, studied the language, passed the exam on it. Recently, a new law was issued in Russia, according to which I must once again pass the exam, learn the history and laws of Russia. Now I'm preparing for the exam for the certificate. Without him, I will not be able to get a job, says Paul. In Nigeria, I have a degree in programming and IT technology. I went to university. I understand computers. I can work with software. Now I help neighbors, friends, but I dream of finding a stable job to make money. At home, Paul has parents, relatives, and many friends who now willingly meet Russian women on the Internet and even dream of creating families with them. And there was also a grandfather, the king of several tribes at once. He approved the marriage of his eldest grandson, accepted Natalia into the family, and is now looking forward to heirs. In March, a big celebration of the king will be held in Lagos, at which the whole family, including Natalia, should be present. Perhaps the issue of succession to the throne will be decided there. After all, since the heir to the throne met Natalia and left for Russia, his plans for the future have changed somewhat. Perhaps Paul will transfer his powers to assistants to control the tribes remotely from Russia. Our most cherished dream is to give birth to a child, no matter whether it's a boy or a girl. We want to have a full-fledged happy family, to have laughter in our house, to have children's games, comfort, warmth, happiness. Without children, they do not exist. I think we can, dreams an African prince from New Corners. But the very surprising thing of all of that was that after a year and a half of their marriage, Natalia Vedanina gave birth to twins. Actually, when Paul came to the hospital to check his kids, he saw something very strange of them. They were black, just like him exactly. They didn't take anything from their mother. The genes of Paul were dominating them. When Natalia discovered that she's pregnant, the doctors discouraged her. They said that at her age it was no longer possible to get pregnant, but she did. They went to the doctor for every appointment together, and when he found out the ultrasound that she was expecting twins, he jumped up from his chair and cried. They were tears of joy and happiness, and she stayed quietly because she knew she wasn't alone, but there were three of them. She could feel it. Throughout the entire period of pregnancy, the doctors feared for her condition. They took care of her, advised her, they treated her with respect and affection, for which she was very grateful. After all, the mental attitude of doctors has also supported in this state. Their babies, Daniel and David, their milk chocolates, as they like to call them, were born on time by cesarean section. Paul always helped her with the kids. He changed their diapers, rocked them at night. He loved to mess with them. But unfortunately, this happiness didn't last so long. On a fatal day, Paul got out with his brother and a friend to disco. It was a Friday. What really happened there was devastating. He went to the dance floor and fell. He went into cardiac arrest. It was a shock for his wife. He was doing exercise. He often went to the doctors and even did ultrasound of the heart as a normal checkup and everything was fine. He was healthy and never complained about his heart. He was only 33 years old. After six years of family happiness, the woman left alone with one-year-old babies in her arms.